Hello everybody. It's time to dig into another Imagine video and find something which you've never probably seen before on the show. But before we go any further, quick question for you. Have you ever felt like you were kind of missing something in your life? Like where one day you felt like you're just your average ordinary person and all of a sudden you found something or something just found you which kind of made you want to change your life a little bit? Well, that's probably what you're going to find out in this video, all right? You see, about seven months ago, I made a shout out to one of my favorite YouTubers of all time, Crazy Nate, whose birthday is April 2nd, all right? And just so you know, this little pin right here I got from him, which reads Crazy Nate. I'm not sure if you can read that, but let me bring it up to you. Crazy Nate right there, all right? I got this because I won a contest from him, okay? So, of course, if you can already read by the description right there, we're basically going to find all the Easter eggs and mistakes in the movie The Smurfs. Now, before we go any further, if you've ever seen the movie before, the one in 2011, the first one, you should probably stop watching this video and go watch the movie first, then come back because you might find a little bit of spoiler alert mistakes, okay? And also, the first time that I watched The Smurfs, believe it or not, was when it was first in theaters in 2011. Believe it or not, I actually remember going to the movies and then watching it and then coming back. And now here we are, here I am, 11 years later, and I still am watching the movie somehow, some way. But check this out. 2012, 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2017, 2018, and 2019, 2020, I... I, I wasn't even paying attention to the movie all those times. The reason I uh, the reason I got back into this movie is because one time I was just while watching Netflix like a casual college student does, and then I just happened to come across the movie and I just pressed play, and then all of these things just happened to come back into my brain, and that's when I had the idea. <clears throat> and then I was watching it, and I came across all these things which seemed like they came from familiar movies. Okay, all right, enough chit chat. Let's dive into the Easter eggs and mistakes, okay? Okay, so, okay, so there are a lot of Easter eggs in this movie. As you can see, there are three pages right here. So I'm gonna do my best and go in order as to when they show up in the movie. So if somebody at home is watching this and you have the movie, you could probably just follow along with me and see all of the Easter eggs and mistakes, okay? So I'm gonna do my best to go in order as to when they showed up in the movie so I don't forget to mention them, okay? So um, in the opening scene of where the narrator says, each Smurf is about three apples high. If you were to um, stack one apple on top of another, on top of another, it would create about nine inches, where in the movie, the Smurfs are about six inches. So that's about half a foot. Three, if three apples high would probably be about 75% of a foot, okay? The whole time they were talking about their favorite event, the Blue Moon Festival. Fun fact, the Blue Moon Festival is actually a real worldwide event which is held in um, other places in the world such as Coachella or the Black Optional Festival. <clears throat> All right, and check this out. Every single Smurf in there has their own special personality which gets their names after such as Grouchy, Clumsy, Smurfette, Papa, Brainy, and all those types of people. All right. <clears throat> Okay, and right when they were, okay, and check this out. So, so when Clumsy is riding along the wheelbarrow accidentally because he got carried away from it, he stumbles into Chef Smirk who's carrying bundles of pizza. Meanwhile, he crashes into an ice sculpture and then clumps of ice chips fall onto them where he says, I just invented frozen pizza. But he didn't really invent frozen pizza. He, he was just the first of the Smurfs to invent it. Fun fact, the first frozen pizza was debuted in the 1950s. All right. <laughs> All right, and check this out. So when Brainy says the other Smurfs don't want to dance with Clumsy for a thing called fractures, I was really curious about what it was. But it turns out fractures is a verb in a noun. It means the cause of breaking or splitting something. Because, well, if you're clumsy, well, you need to be careful about what you do. Okay, and right after he says that, he's like, how can anybody think that? And when he flaps his hands like that, it whacks grouchy and gutsy in their 
faces. And then when you go all the way to the end of the movie where he says, I'm a hero, he does the thing against his hands and then flaps them on their backs once again. Which doesn't bother me, honestly. <clears throat> all right, and when Vanity says, huh, a worry line, a worry line is actually a real thing. It's a wrinkle or a gauze um, between the forehead and the eyebrows. All right, and the stage in which they were um, in which they were doing the rehearsal of the Blue Moon Festival on, that's the same stage which they used to celebrate Smurfette's birthday in the Smurfs Two in two thousand thirteen in the credits. All right, and the original comics said that Papa Smurf is the leader and lives in the forest with 99 sons and one daughter. Knowing, if you've been watching my past videos of where I drew all 100 Smurfs, there are exactly 100 people. Knowing it's Papa Smurf, that's one, Smurfette as the one daughter, leading 98 sons. So they were kind of wrong. And now we're moving on to Gargamel, okay? So with Gargamel, um, there, are three, there are things which I found interesting. A, he looks like a wizard, but didn't look like it to me. Right, and check this out. When they were leaving to, to go find the Smurfs, his castle roof broke off. But then if you watch the credits of the Smurfs too, when they fall from the sky and crash, the roof is back on. <clears throat> right? And check this out. So I'm also... When Papa Smurf is doing his essence for the vision, it shows mythical visions which then actually happen later in the movie. Fun fact, most movies actually make visions which actually come true, such as 2001, The Space Odyssey. All right, and, and there are some mistakes which I found in the movie that didn't quite make sense to me. Right after Papa Smurf tells Clumsy to stay in the village, he goes out of the village and then goes back in only to be followed by Azrael and Gargamel. Which was a really weird thing to do. All right, and now moving on to when they find they find the Smurfs and then they have to get away. And they come across uh, two paths, which is this way and this way. And there's a sign that reads, go this way. But then you figure out it reads, do not go this way. And Clumsy happens to go that way anyway followed by Smurfette, Grouchy, Gutsy, Brainy, and Papa, and they happen to go that way too. All right, and then, and then there's these signs that reads, beware, I mean it, especially in a moon, agony in your head. But, but my thing is, who wrote those signs there? Unless they, unless they happen to go through the same situation and then happen to come back and then wrote those signs, <clears throat> which only they knew what they were, but, n but none of us knew what they were, All right? And, and then when Clumsy goes to the edge of the bridge and then teeters and then hangs on to a root dangling from the sides, they basically had to do a chain to retrieve him. And when that happened, it reminded me of Toy Story 1, where they used the barreled monkeys to link them together to make a chain to retrieve Buzz Lightyear, but it was too short. Out the window in Toy Story 1. So that was pretty clever. And something else I'm very curious about is when, and check this out. So when the portal opened, out of all the places, it just happened to be in that waterfall spot, which is kind of cool and kind of weird. All right. But, but here's my thing, though. If there are 100 Smurfs in the village and six of them went that way and the other 94 went the other way, why didn't Gargamel go that way and, and retrieve more? Unless he knew that Papa Smurf was going that way to retrieve Clumsy with the others. And his guess was right. All right, and check this out. So when the vortex opens in the waterfall, it's reference to the uh, vortex opening in the ocean horizon in the movie Event Horizon, all right? With water, of course. But check this out. Event Horizon was in the 90s and the Smurfs w was in the early 2000s. This is true though, but check this out. Most movies have the same references, but not all of them collaborate with the same categories. <clears throat> right? But here's a uh, so really quick question for you guys. Comment down below, tell me, when you see something like that, do you say vortex or do you say portal? I say portal. 
All right, and then out of all the places, as soon as they get sucked into the vortex, they spew out the other way into a waterfall rock. And that waterfall, I was very curious about, all right? But then in this book here about, um, about New York right here, but that waterfall is actually a waterfall underneath the footbridge, which looks like this. And that waterfall in that footbridge is in Prospect Park. So that's where they were. And then when they climbed up that bowler to view Manhattan skyscrapers, that's where they were as well. All right, and check this out. In the, um, in the 2000 century, the Smurfs was the 315th movie to be filmed in New York and then to go internationally across the world. All right, and there are lots of movie, there, there are lots of mistakes, which lots of people don't really figure out in these movies, but I happen to figure them out too, okay? So when they're being chased by Azrael, Clumsy happens to tear and then fall into one of Patrick um, Winslow's boxes of research, which then he then stacks another one on so that he cannot get out. And then later when he reaches his apartment, if you watch carefully, he s somehow gets out of the one at the top instead of the one at the bottom. How's that possible? All right, and check this out. So when they follow, um, all right, so when the Smurfs follow Patrick on the top of his taxi cab through Times Square, that um, scene has lots of Easter eggs. For, for example, on one billboard, it reads American Idiot. American Idiot is a American band which started in 2004, which actually started in New York, New York City. And, and check this out, right in front of the Smurfs of where they're on that cap, that headline reads Blue Man Group. Blue Man Group is an American art company founded in 1987. All right, and also, um, and also here's something else. Right next to their taxi is another taxi. And on that taxi, um, headline, it reads Arthur Christmas. Arthur Christmas is another movie that Sony Pictures Animation made. Only that was a Christmas movie in 2011, not in the summer 2007 like the Smurfs. All right? All right, um, and, and, and here's the thing. The first time which we see Grace and Patrick together, they're in their apartment where, and the first thing which she says is, ooh, a baby kick. When she said that, um, I looked online instantly and read baby kick was actually um, another reference to Diary of a Wimpy Kid, where um, where in the first novel, um, the uh, mother was pregnant and then she happens to say, every time we kiss, I get a baby kick. All right. All right, and now we're gonna go to the back and now when Clumsy enters the bathroom, there's a bunch of these tricks, starting with, with this one. Starting with this one, okay? So when he gulps down the soap from the nozzle, thinking it's berries, it might be reference to Spencer Shea, when he thought the soap in the bathroom were dollops of candy, not to mention they both <clears throat> belched it bubbles, which then popped. All right, and then moments after he tumbled onto the desk, he accidentally turned on a blow dry, which blowed, and then he had to walk to fight the motion, which might be reference to Stuart Little, where in the credits, they blew a hairdryer to him, and then he had to walk the other way and then fell over. And then he fell into the toilet, and they had to climb out of the toilet, and then when he got up, he run against the toilet paper roll, which unspewled, much like in Toy Story 3, when Woody was in the urinal stall, and he had to run across the toilet paper roll to prevail dropping into the toilet bowl. All right? Um, and check this out. When, <laughs> right, so this one, it might be confusing, but just hear me out, okay? So when, Check this out. So when Grace and Patrick f f find the Smurfs in their apartment, and check this out. They're in New York, right? Check this out. The director of the Smurfs, Roger Godslow, he also edited the first two Home Alones. The first two Home Alones had to do something with that. And check this out. When, uh, I'll check this out. So when they figure them out, they scream much like the famous scream that Kevin did in Home Alone 1 in the bathroom and Grace happened to find Clumsy in the bathroom too. And then after that, he happened to splat into a window, much like the pelican 
did when he spotted into the window in Finding Nemo in Australia. Alright, and the moments after that, when they enter the living room, and then Gutsy ties Patrick up behind his back with knitting yarn, it might be reference to Jack Black in Gulliver's Travels when he was tied with small people to the ground so that he couldn't get up. Right. And then the very next morning on Patrick's laptop, which is a Sony, which is a Sony laptop, um, on it, it reads Smurfs, and then it shows the picture of a statue, which is actually a real statue because in Brussels, Belgium, where the Smurfs were first created, there's actually a Brussels statue of a Smurf on top of a white capped mushroom top. All right. All right, so this one is really funny. All right, so when the Smurfs say, ooh, Google, you know, when Patrick uses Google, in my preference to the Toy Story aliens going, oh, knowing that they were from different dimensions. All right, and, all right, and, all right, and check this out. Right when Patrick and Grace leave to go and leave the Smurfs behind in their apartment, uh, Papa Smurf says, I'm 546 years old. And if you watch the comics or the cartoons, he was actually 546 years old up to that point when, when they made the movies. And when just when Patrick is about to leave, he says, I mean, look what happened to E.T. because their world does not collaborate with other visitors from other places. And E.T. is a very classic movie. All right, and check this out. So, so when they touch things like that in the classic shot where his finger lights up against um, um, the other person, uh, Henry, I think. Uh, so when they touch fingers like that, it might be when Smurfette and Grace do high fours when their fingers touch together. All right, and then later when they have to jump off the balcony to follow Patrick to the Angelou shop, they use their hats as parachutes. And that is reference to the inventor in the 16th century, where an inventor called, when an adventure named Mac Laugh In used his hat as a parachute sometimes, and he succeeded sometimes. All right, and, and check this out. Let's uh, check this out. So when I was watching the movie, I was curious, when they filmed that, that back, back in the day, where, where were those buildings? And the little did I know, I actually figured out where in New York City they were. Okay, so the Angelou building where Patrick worked with Odile, uh, which Odile, by the way, was played by Sophia Regard, who's pretty cool. That building is in the center in Manhattan on Fifth Avenue and Rockfield, their center. So that intersection is where they filmed the building at. All right. And then in his office, there's lots of things. Okay, so, so when the Smurfs say, I've got a message, always chew with your mouth closed. That's a manner though. It's true though. <laughs> and then when Gutsy says, grab life by the grapes, it's actually a real book known as Grab Life Ball. It's not Grab Life by the Grapes. It's Grab Life by the Balls, which is a real, which is a real book. And, and check this out. Smurfette was voiced by Katy Perry. Katy Perry also made a reference to one of her own successes. In the office right after they say Grab Life by the Grapes, she says, I kissed a Smurf and I liked it. That's reference to one of her most popular songs ever, I Kissed a Girl. The first lyric state, I kissed a girl and I liked it. All right, and then right before Patrick calls Grace to get the Smurfs out of his hair, if you look on the top shelf, there's a pin art which, which one of the Smurfs happens to press their faces against. That might be a reference to when Buzz Lightyear pressed his face against the pin art screen in Toy Story 2. All right. And now we go to FAO Schwartz. The FAO Schwartz is probably the most funniest part of the movie at all. All right, that, so fun fact, 
not only New York, but Manhattan also has six FAO Schwartz stops, so it's very popular. All right, but that location is on the intersection of East 59th Street and 767 Fifth Avenue. So these are real locations which they used almost 11 years ago. And this one I cannot forget. Growing up, my favorite candy of all was Mars Chocolate M&M's. Where, where in the video, where in the movie, they used M&M's as a symbol to grouchy. Right, and check this out. In 2011, it was actually the seven, um, 70th anniversary of where mi uh, milk chocolate chip, milk chocolate M&Ms were invented in 1950, uh, 1941. So from 1941 to 2011, that's about 70 years anniversary. All right, and then right when the Okay, and right when Clumsy is being rubbed against that scanner above the cashier, the um, the person who's who's the employer at the cashier line, that person is Bradley Goslow. Bradley Goslow is actually the director's son, Raja Goslow. So it's like a little cameo. All right, and, and check this out. Moments after that, they run across all over the place like rats. And check this out, this skateboard in which Gutsy, Brainy, and uh, Papa used to, to get away from the runny kids, that skateboard was actually motorized, All right? Because um, I, I, because when they were making the video, I'm sorry, so when they're making that tape um, in, in, uh, in the store, one of the employees had to, had to attach one of those like specialized motors to the skateboard, so when they activate it, um, they can make it go go right, left, backwards, forwards, faster, whatever it takes to make it realistic to the movie, all right? And the moments after that, when Gargamel exits the elevator and goes on to the next floor, if you look at the back stand, there's a poster with all the Muppets. The Muppets happen right after this movie, right after this movie happened with Neil Patrick Harris. Neil Patrick Harris not only starred in the Smurfs, but also in the Puppets as one of the pup Muppets. <laughs> It's hard to say. All right, so we're actually getting very close. There's there's not really that much left. I'm, I'm going through these very quickly. All right, and check this out. When they're back at the apartment that, that night, when Smurfette enters the room with her new dress on, she's standing right underneath a vent. This one I know for sure is an Easter egg. So when, so when the vent rises, her skirt starts to fly up as she was padding to put it down. That's reference to the famous Mela Moreau, who accidentally sat on a vent, thought it was safe, but it floated up and her skirt rose up as she battled to put it down. All right, and then the um, and then the next day when they find that bookstore, that bookstore is actually a real bookstore. It's called the Cafe Bookstore on one hundred and twenty six um, Carbs by Street and Prince Avenue, all right? And, and check this out, that book's cover, check out, that book is actually a real book with that blue cover. It's really hard to pronounce it, but it's called La Histoire des Trumps. If you Google translate it, La Histoire des Trumps in English, it means the history of the Strumps, I mean Smurfs. So La Histoire des Trumps translates to the history of the Smurfs, right? In the moment after they escape, they ride on pigeons, right? Back to the apartment of where in the second part, <laughs> they had to ride um, the duck, which was um, Patrick Winslow's uh, stepfather when he was suddenly a dog and, <laughs> um, and they had to fly on his back which was probably similar to the pigeons as well, right? And then in Belvedere Castle, also Belvedere Castle is actually real, it's not fake. All right, so it's actually the heart of, of the uh, Central Park, which is here, I believe. See, right there is Be Belvedere Castle in Central Park.
All right, and trust me, lots of things happen to that. From like simple parties to weddings, lots of things happen, especially in New York. All right, anyway, on that terrace, some things happen. All right, so when Brittany lights the firework and explodes in the air, it's reference to the ending of where the fireworks all erupt around the Eiffel Tower in the Smurfs too. All right, and then right when um, Gargamel catches Papa with his laser wand, and then throws him up into the air. It's referenced probably to Meet the Robinsons, where Wilbert was thrown to the air with a dinosaur and then only had to be catched by the main character, which was Lewis, and in this case had to be catched by Patrick Winslow. All right, and there's two things left. I know, I got through these pretty quickly, and we're doing this less than a half hour. All right, um, check this out. After when he got defeated, he got thrown off the terrace into the street where he stood up and then walked and then got hit by a bus, which carried him down the street. That is a reference to mean girls at the end when when, when the character Rigonda got hit by the bus and got jacked down the street. All right. <laughs> All right. And finally, I cannot forget this, but the narrator Smurf, his, um, so that person was voiced by Tom Key. Tom can Sorry, it's Tom Can. Tom Can not, not only stars as a narrator in that movie, but in other movies, such as Star Wars The Clone Wars in the early 2000s, and UFO Flies. He was also a narrator in that. All right, and there's one last thing I want to show you. All right, and check this out. Sometimes I think I'd figured... Did the beginning actually happen with the end, or did the end actually happen with the beginning? All right, and there's something here which I need to show you, okay? So that boathouse in which they, they started with, with the uh, ceremony, um, I forgot what it's called, but <laughs> I'll get there. Oh, so anyway, so right after Patrick and Grace send the Smurfs home with that portal in the waterfall again where they left. Um, um, and then they cross that bridge. That bridge is also in Prospect Park where lots of other movies happen to get shooted in that exact same spot. All right, and this one I cannot miss, okay? Because check this out. If you have the movie and you watch it with the audio description on, they say as they cross, as they cross the bridge, that bridge um, is actually the same beginning path of where the Smurfs actually cross paths with Patrick as well. All right, so I think I, I think you guys know what I'm trying to say, but I just wanna make it as clear as possible, all right? Yeah, here it is. See that? That boathouse is what they actually sh shooted it on, which is also in Prospect Park. That boathouse is called the boathouse on Lou Water. L U L L W A T E R. <clears throat> anyway, and and that's and that's basically all the Easter eggs. I mean, can, I mean, can you believe it? Look at all this research, and, and check this out. And check this out. Ever since I actually got back into that movie, it only took me seven days to go from one Easter egg in the beginning all the way to the end, where. Not that many, as I suspected. There's probably like 50 things here. Anyway, anyway, that's with me. I know this is not, here's the thing. I know that this is not as exciting and thrilling as what my other movies because my favorites, because it's not really amazing. But but I thought, hey, um, if, if we're in the beginning, besides if we're in the beginning of a new year, I had to make something extraordinary happen. So I thought, why not make something extraordinary? For something which had to me incredible in 2021 with this. All right, in case you guys did not see the playlist of me drawing all 100, all 100 Smurfs, here's the proof of the pudding. All right, and all right, and check this out, guys. That, and check this out. This movie to me, The Smurfs, was really heart touching because the first time I watched it, I was like, Am I really watching something this extraordinary? And, and like nowadays, it's over there <clears throat> on my rack, so I'm getting choked up. 
Okay, so anyway, to me, it's part powerful, part heartwarming, part heart touching, part beautiful, and all magical. And all, it's smart, it's funny, it's probably fit f for the whole family. Um, and and truthfully, if you ask me, I just I just can't really find anything wrong with the movie because it's so awesome. But, and that's when I did that, and that's when I did this with you guys. But anyway, but anyway, so so that's it for me. So until then, <laughs> thanks for watching. Of course, don't forget to subscribe, leave a like if you guys like this video, and uh, I guess that's it. And of course, a very quick shout out to once again Crazy Nate for <laughs> inspiring me to to do this video, and I hope maybe he watches it one time, maybe in maybe in the maybe in the near future when I said his birthday um, on YouTube. And uh, let's hope for the best. Um, anyway, I'll keep you guys posted for as long as I can for this year. Anyway, let's put our differences aside, focus on, focus on the near future, and let's have a nice, calm new year of 2022. Until then, thanks for watching. Thank you all so much for supporting me, all currently 4,000 of you. Until then, share a smile, spread the word around. They are contagious.